Hey, this is Avi Gutman with another Ask Me Anything event brought to you by QuantReasoning.com. I invite you to join me live next time. We do this every Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern, and you can attend for free by starting your free trial at QuantReasoning.com. So it looks like JD did a great job there in the chat box rephrasing this question. Right? He used the free info, of which there's quite a lot in this case, to uncover what it is that the GMAT is really asking. Because it looks like the GMAT is asking, was the revenue from softcover books greater than revenue from hardcover books? It looks like that's what it's asking. But if you take into account what we already know from the free info, we must rephrase the question to something that makes use of that yellow highlighted text. That's really our job in data sufficiency. When they offer us free info, our job is to take that free info and use it to simplify, to change in some way what the question is really asking. And the insight that JD had there was that the connection between revenue and number of things sold is that revenue is the product of quantity times price. So the free info is about quantity, but the question is about revenue and the missing link there is price. So JD rephrased the question to instead of being about revenue, being about the price, in this case it would be the, the average price of softcover books compared to the average price of hardcover books. So that's what the question is really asking. I want to show you so that you can see it visually with your, own, with your own eyes what that relationship looks like. So we know that price times quantity equals revenue, and this is a relationship that the GMAT expects you to know. So if you were not familiar with that relationship, you should get familiar with it. And in this question, we're comparing soft cover to hard cover. So I'm going to build a little, a quick little ratio there of soft to hard. And we know the quantity sold was two to one. So I'm just going to put a two there. That's the ratio of quantities of soft cover to hard cover. So we know that. And the question is asking, is this more than one? Meaning is the ratio of revenues coming in from soft cover to hard cover is that more than one? Or in other words, were the revenues of soft cover greater than the revenues of hard cover? Right? Is that ratio more than one? And then we have to ask ourselves, well, under what circumstances would this product be more than one, given that the quantity is two? And the answer is, if the ratio of the prices is more than half, this would have to be more than half in order for the answer to be yes. If that's more than half, then the product is more than one. So that was the work that JD did there when he rephrased the question. And I'm going to type up that rephrase right now. So what we're really asking is, was the average soft cover price more than half that of hard cover? Now we're ready to look at the statements let me know in the chat, which of these statements would you start with? Which of these do you find easier to evaluate? So most of you prefer to start with statement two. Is that because it's fairly easy for you to see that statement two doesn't stand a chance of being sufficient on its own? It's giving us the overall average price. So I guess we could say based on that, that the soft cover average and the hard cover average are on two sides of 14, right? One of them is going to be below 14 and the other is going to be above 14 because the overall average is at exactly 14. But there's no way for us to tell anything about the ratio of soft cover price to hard cover price. I don't think we could even tell which is more expensive and which is less expensive. I mean, I know from real life that hardcover books tend to be more expensive than softcover books, but just based on what I'm looking at here on the screen, just the free info in statement two, I can't even tell which one is more expensive. So I really can't say anything at all about the ratio of the average prices. So let's start with statement two 
as many of you wanted to, and, and eliminate the answer choices that claim that statement two is sufficient on its own. So B and D are gone. Now, when we look at statement one on its own, so what's statement one saying? It's saying that the average price of hardcover was in fact $10 more than the average price of softcover. Now, we've seen this many, many times on the GMAT, those of you who have been here for a while, uh, we know that knowing the difference between two points on the number line does not allow us to infer their ratio. Knowing the difference between two numbers does not allow us to infer their ratio. Now, I can say, I can say now that the ratio of soft cover price to hard cover price is less than one. I can say that. Why? Because statement one tells me that soft cover is cheaper than hard cover on average. As I expected, just from my knowledge of, of real life, right? Soft cover books are generally cheaper than hard cover books and statement one confirms that it's $10 cheaper. So I can say that the ratio that we're trying to find out is less than one, but I wanted to know, is it more than half? So when we know that something is less than one, can we tell whether or not it's more than half? It could be on either side of half. All I know is it's less than one. Okay? And again, knowing the difference between two tick marks on the number line does not enable me to infer their ratio. It just allows me to find out if it's less than one or more than one. We eliminate answer choice A. So we can draw a number line for statement one and say, here's the average price. On the left side is the average price for soft cover and the right side is the average price for hard cover. And that distance on the number line is $10. That's what statement one is giving us. We know exactly that distance, but we can't say anything about the ratio. The ratio of two to one that you're talking about that, that was given here in the free info, this yellow highlight, mm -hmm. that's this. So let me actually color match that so it's easier to, to see the, the relationship there. So that's coming in from that first sentence from the free info. And then this part here is what they're asking. Is that more than one? In order for the answer to be yes, we would require this to be more than half. And so that's our rephrased question. I'll put a green highlight there to match the, uh, the rephrased question. Okay. When we are given information about an average price of soft cover books, that doesn't tell us anything about the actual prices of the individual software, uh, the individual soft cover books. It's just giving us the overall average of all of those books. And there could be a thousand soft cover books that we're talking about. And there could be a very large standard deviation, which I think is what Surajit is, is referring to, right? What if some of those soft cover books are only 15 cents because they're like three pages and uh, the more expensive ones are a thousand pages long and, and those cost a hundred bucks for a softcover book. But on average, there's some price for the softcover books and the same goes for the hardcover books. On average, their price is some number. We may or may not need to know anything about the individual prices of the individual books. In other words, it's possible depending on the circumstance it's possible that just knowing the average price would be enough. An average price is a kind of ratio. Why do I say that? Because it comes from adding up all of the prices of the individual books and dividing by the number of books. So that's a ratio. You've got a numerator, which is the sum total price of all of the books together. And you've got a denominator, which is the number of books. So an average price is a ratio, and in fact, any average of anything is a ratio, because it's sum divided by number of terms. That's what you'll find in the dictionary if you look up the word average. Now, we've talked in the past about the average of two ratios. We've had the example that many of you like about my dad's age to my age, and how over time that ratio gets smaller because we're both aging at the same rate. So we're adding to each of our ages by a ratio of one to one. And in the beginning, the ratio was more like 10,000 to one because my dad was 10,000 days old on the day that I was born. And then that ratio over time gets closer and closer to a ratio of one to one because that's the ratio, that's the new ratio. So we're mixing two ratios there and we're getting the average of those ratios. We talked about an example where you have a nightclub that wants a certain ratio of boys to girls before midnight and then after midnight admits 
a different ratio of boys to girls, and at closing time, the ratio of boys to girls is some average of the two ratios that we were uh, using to admit people. Same thing going on here. You've got an average of two ratios. Now, we haven't combined the statements yet, but when we talk about the ratio of soft cover average to hard cover average, that's an average of two ratios. But that's kind of the concept that's being tested in this question is we have one ratio, which is the average price of soft cover books, another ratio, which is the average price of hard cover books. And we may or may not need to know anything about the individual prices of the individual books. We may be able to just work abstractly with average prices. And we'll see if we can or not when we combine the statements. We're just about to do that. And, and by the way, maybe an analogy that will be helpful is you could be talking about the average height of children in grade two and the average height of children in grade one. And that could be a sensible conversation to have, even though we don't know anything about the actual heights of any of the actual kids, right? But you would expect that on average, the second graders will be taller than the first graders even though there may be a first grader who's taller than one of the second graders, that could happen. But on average, you would expect the second graders to be taller and you can talk about the ratio of those heights on average and, and that kind of stuff. And that's kind of what's going on in this question. I'm ready to combine these statements. I know from statement two that the average prices of softcover and hardcover are going to fall on either side of $14. So I'm gonna draw a number line here and I'm going to say, here's soft cover, here's hard cover. I also know that the total distance of that number line, that range, is $10. How do I know that? From statement one. And I know that 14, the actual number $14, falls somewhere inside this number line. And my question to all of you is, are you able to use anything that we already know Hint, look at the yellow highlight, the, the free info. Are you able to use anything we already know to know where exactly to place the $14 tick mark? Should it be closer to the left side or closer to the right side? Or how much closer? How can we think about this? Exactly. If we're, if we're talking about twice as many soft cover books as hard cover books, then the overall average, which we know here is $14, that number has to be twice as close to the soft cover average price as it is to the hard cover average price. So visually, I'm going to put that right about there. That's $14. It's twice as close to the soft cover average price as it is to the hard cover average price. And again, why is that? Well, we have a kind of a tug of war going here where the soft cover price is pulling the average towards itself and the hard cover price is pulling the average towards itself, but the soft cover is twice as strong, pulling twice as hard, and you end up with this ratio, which I could define as a ratio of two to one. So, so you know, if that distance is x, then this distance is 2x, so we can say that there's $3.33 to the left of 14 and $6.66 to the right of 14. So now we have quite a lot of information here, and I've forgotten what the question was. What was the question? Was the average price of softcover more than half of the average price, price of, of hardcover? Now, we have to be careful here because Statement two didn't tell us that the overall average was 14. It said that it was greater than 14. So that means that I need to take my picture, my number line with the soft cover average price and the hard cover average price, and I need to visualize moving these up the number line. I'm moving this whole picture to the right on the number line because this is actually the minimum point at which the average could sit. So I need to imagine moving S and H to the right from there, and I need to wonder what would that do to the ratio of S to H? I know that it can be more than half. Why do I know that it could be more than half? Well, because for example, it could be 
a thousand and a thousand and ten. That's pretty close to a ratio of one to one. So I know it could be more than half. Is it possible for it to be half or less than half? At a very minimum, this would be 1067. That's the minimum price there. In which case this would be 2167. Now you don't actually you don't have to actually find the exact numbers, you just have to kind of show to yourself that even at the minimum point, the average price of soft cover is greater than half of the average price of hard cover. In fact, can you all tell me in the chat box, with a $10 difference, what prices would give you exactly half when you know that they're $10 apart? What are the two prices where one would be exactly half of the other when you know that they're $10 apart? 10 and 20. Yeah, exactly. If soft cover is on average $10 and hard cover is, exact, is on average $20, then the ratio would be exactly half. The minute you start moving to the right on the number line, keeping that distance between them the same, this becomes exactly like that story about my dad's age and my age, because you're moving them up the number line at the same pace, right? When, when one when you add 100 to one of them, you're adding 100 to the other because you have to maintain that distance of 10 between them. So you're moving them together up the number line. Whatever your starting ratio was, it's going to start getting closer and closer to one to one. Why? Because you're adding to them at a ratio of one to one because you're moving them at the same rate up the number line. And when you go to a million versus a million and 10, it's practically one to one. So as you move up the number line, you're getting closer and closer to one to one. If you're starting already at more than half, which we are, because we're to the right of 10 and 20, if you're already starting there, you're always going to be greater than half. And that gives us a definitive yes, which means the correct answer is C. Hey, I'm just gonna interrupt my own video for a moment here. If you're finding value in this video, please let me know in the comments below and give this video a thumbs up. It really motivates me to keep uploading a new video every day. All right, back to the video. The reason that I placed this uh, average tick mark closer to the left than it is to the right is because of that free info at the very beginning of the question where we were told that the soft cover books represent twice as many as uh, the hardcover books in the overall number of books. So, uh, so there's that tug of war that I was describing where each side is pulling the average towards it. One side is stronger than the other and therefore manages to pull the average uh, harder towards itself. What I did is I took the total range of $10, which we have here, and I split it in three equal parts because you've got an X and you've got another two X there for a total of three ratio units, each of which would be three and a third. So then what I did is I said, if we were at 14, which we can't be because it actually says it's greater than 14, but theoretically, if we were at 14, what would that be? I would subtract three and a third from 14, and that would give me, technically, it would give me 10.6666666. But I know that I can't actually be at 14. I could be, you know, one penny to the right of that at 1401, and, and then that would be 1067. So that's how I came up with a minimum of 1067. But again, you don't actually have to compute that. You just need to be confident that whatever happens, you're definitely to the right of 10 and 20, respectively, because 10 and 20 is that inflection point. At 10 and 20, that's where the ratio would be exactly half. But anytime you're to the right of 10 and 20, that ratio will be more than half. And that's sufficient to answer the question because the question didn't ask for the exact ratio the question just wanted to know is that ratio more than half so the minute i see that i'm confined to being to the right of 10 with both prices then uh, then i know that uh, the answer is c the original ratio is going to start moving towards the new ratio at which you're adding stuff now in both cases we're adding stuff at a ratio of one to one so in my dad and my case we're aging at the same rate at a ratio of one to one and in this case the uh, prices are going up by a ratio of one to one so in both cases you would expect the starting ratio to move towards 
one to one. Now, with my dad and me, that ratio happened to be very large. It was 10,000 to one. So when a ratio of 10,000 to one starts moving towards a ratio of one to one, it just so happens that it's going down. Yes, okay, one case, by two is going up. Yeah. from a fraction, from a ratio that's less than one, when that one goes towards one to one, it's moving up. But in both cases, they're moving towards one to one. It just yeah. depends on whether you started out above one or below one. I think that's a good point. So what NG is reminding us is the following. If you can fairly easily see that neither statement is sufficient on its own, meaning you're down to just two answer choices, C or E, and then you can't quite prove that it's impossible to get to the answer, right? Because if you want to pick E, you have to be able to prove that you, it's impossible to get to the answer. So if you fail to do that, but you don't quite see how you could get to the right answer, so, you're, you know, so you can't really pick C either. You can't pick either of them. You can't pick C because you're not clever enough to figure out how this is sufficient. But you can't pick E because you're not clever enough to figure out how to prove that it's not sufficient. That w then what NG is reminding us is that the strategy there is to pick C. You know, probabilistically speaking, you're more likely to be right with C than with E in that circumstance. So again, the circumstance is I easily eliminated A, B, and D. I'm not clever enough to prove that together they're sufficient, but I'm also not clever enough to prove that together they're not sufficient. I'm going to guess C. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.